Yeah, there's a new report out on consumer confidence, which suggests the surge in holiday shopping could last into the new year. And that's important for all of us because consumer spending makes up 70% of the U.S. economy. Susan McGinnis is in Washington with the numbers for us this morning. Hi, Susan. Hi, good morning, Chris and Erica. Well, this is a very good sign and a very important sign. Consumer confidence numbers showing a big jump. It's all about how consumers feel about the economy and their spending. If they feel good about their jobs, their finances and business, they will spend. So add to that what is so far a decent holiday shopping season and there is reason to be encouraged. It's a sign things are improving, not just on Wall Street, but on Main Street as well. The latest report on consumer confidence shows a big spike, with an index of 64.5 in December, up from 55.2 just a month ago. More Americans think business conditions are good, the job picture is brightening, and that their personal financial situations will keep improving. The more upbeat feelings coincide with a jollier holiday shopping season than was anticipated, as heavy discounting brought in early shoppers. Still, the news was less merry for some. Sears Kmart just announced it's closing up to 120 stores. It's been a difficult time for all retailers, but it's been particularly difficult for Sears to garner the kind of demand to keep its doors open at all of its stores. Some managed better than others, helped by the surge in holiday shopping, particularly online. Target, Walmart, and Amazon.com are clear winners here. People are spending what they have in these retailers, but online is a real big winner here. 16.4% is the number sales rose online on Christmas Day. That's a huge number. But while consumers are gaining faith, the economy is improving, obstacles remain. Homes still aren't selling. Values fell 3.4%, with 19 of 20 cities showing declines. I feel badly for the sellers that are losing, and I feel good that the buyers are making good buys, but I think that all in all, things are really going to be turning around very soon. The European financial crisis remains a worry, and as for the bump in holiday shopping, the jury is still out on whether all that discounting helped or hurt retailers' bottom lines. And economists are joining consumers in their optimism. A new poll just out of dozens of them finds they predict growth will increase in 2012. But remember, Chris and Erica, this is all about the improvement in consumer confidence. The overall level of confidence still remains far below where a healthy economy should be. Susan McGinnis in Washington this morning for us. Susan, thanks. Here to sort out all the latest economic data, Mike Santoli, Associate Editor of Barron's. Mike, good to have you with us here this morning. morning. Let's start with some of the good news. Like we saw in Susan's report a second, consumer confidence rose to 64.5 this month, beating economists' expectations. Yep. Just how, uh, how important is this number? What does it really mean in the big picture? It's really much more a reflection of the fact that the other economic data have improved, especially in the labor market in the last few months. Consumer confidence actually, I think, is overestimated in terms of its predictive power in terms of what consumers are going to do. Mm -hmm. What they say and what they do is not always the same thing. But some of the good news within this report were that uh, the assessment of consumers of the labor market uh, was its highest since the financial crisis in early 2009, mm -hmm. as was the assessment of the present condition. Because in April, we had a similar consumer confidence level overall, but mostly it was about, well, we think things are going to get better. Mm -hmm. They weren't saying things are okay now. So this, I mean, obviously people focusing on the positives here, sure. but this is just one month. Yeah. I mean, how much of this could be tied to the holidays? And as you said, it's, it's not always the best indicator because people don't always you know, do what they say. Sure. I, I think it's less tied to the holidays. As I said, April, we had a similar level. Yeah. It's more about the fact that things have stopped getting worse. Uh, you know, the unemployment rate obviously has declined. And more importantly, I think weekly unemployment claims have really broken below their trend of the last few years. So I think in general, they're looking around and saying, you know, things have stopped slipping. Okay. All right. Bad news time. Yeah, right. <laughs> Housing market. Yeah. Uh, there hasn't been a good sign there in ages. 19 of the top 20 markets in the country show prices declining. Once again, uh, the S&P K Schiller composite index dropped 1.2%. Is this ever going to turn around? Yes, it is. Uh, this was for October, by the way. This is a very slow indicator to, to kind of come around. And I don't think prices are going to lead us out of the, uh, the housing mm -hmm. slump. It's going to be activity. It's going to be, uh, you know, the amount of turnover because of affordability rates are high. It's going to be new housing starts. Those things have actually started to improve. Prices, and especially in this 20 city or 20 metropolitan yeah. area measure, have just not been there. I think it's going to be a long, slow bottoming process. Those two things are really tied to the housing market and consumer confidence yes. because you have to feel confident even if you've been in your job for 20 years and people still don't feel confident at this That's point right. buying a new home. Yeah. One of those things that basically you look at what your neighbor's home sold for and if it was not a satisfying number in your head, yeah. it's definitely going to weigh on you for sure.
And then, uh, I'm sorry, go no, I was just going to talk about what Rebecca Jarvis was talking about in that report as well about Sears, yeah. Kmart closing these stores. There's a lot of jobs, isn't there? There's, I mean, there's 4,000 stores in the chain, but yeah. 120 is still a big number, and that's a lot of jobs that are going to be lost. Without a doubt. No, this is definitely uh, one of the victims of, uh, of the consumer slump that's really been in place for a few years now. There's simply not enough consumer dollars to go around to service the store base that we built up through the housing bubble. And, you know, if you think about Sears, biggest seller of appliances in the country, yeah. and uh, it's, it's, it's obviously not kind of kept pace with the targets and the Walmarts and the online of the world. Uh, now, again, you mentioned it's a huge installed base. This is basically a, a small retrenchment, yeah. but it's definitely going to hurt. What about looking forward to 2012? What, what, what are the thoughts on job growth? As you said, we've seen things get less worse, basically. Sure. Exactly. No, the economy has a little bit of momentum going into 2012 yeah. domestically. The problem is every time we've kind of gotten a little bit of a head of steam up, something has come along. Oil, oil prices have gone up to reflect that global demand, or the European uh, debt crisis kind of causes jitters in the corporate mm -hmm. economy. I think that's the big risk right now, because China uh, is actually looking at potentially uh, a steep slowdown. The global growth picture doesn't look great. Domestically, we're actually looking uh, like a safe harbor. But those other things are the risks to that momentum that we're building and that's into 012. that's what everybody's really watching. Exactly. Nice to have you with us. Thank Thanks for coming in this morning. Good to see you.